school program, which sounds like what they do today to Irish dancing. And a brother, my older brother and I went and um, was in the local hall also in the village and Truppens it was to go to learn to dance. And by the time we'd get to the village with the neighbours, we went neighbor, a neighbour dropped us in his car because his two kids were learning also. And as soon as they get us out of the car, there was two, my brother and Pat, and then there was Helen, his sister. The two girls were cornered, give over the money. We would hand over the money, they would go to the local store, they would get as much junk as they could get with the truppence, and we'd go down the back of the hall, and we'd all sit and make ourselves sick eating candy. <laughs> and once it was time, when you would hear them finish up and say, let's go, let's go home now. Nora, you know what to do when Mum asked you what you learned today. John used to say to me, and I'd say, yeah, yeah. And I'd have to get up and make out some steps for mother when I get home, of course. <laughs> that was how we, and we never learned. We never learned. <laughs> she kind of got wise to it after a while, I think. And she said, what's going on? You're not learning. You've no interest. But little did you know what we were doing. <laughs> <laughs> so you were actually just kind of watching and trying to figure out. Oh, yeah. That's the dancing we did when we were kids. I said, if we paid more attention in those days, we wouldn't be learning today. <laughs> <laughs> but you are now today, aren't you? I do right. Irish set dancing. Which I learned over years of my own socialising as I grew up. In Ireland too? Oh yes, yeah. when I was in Dublin I did a lot of it, but I wouldn't have done step dancing. It's totally different yeah. for me. <laughs> I could have learned if I had paid more attention to my <laughs> tropany bit instead of buying penny bars or whatever they were buying. <laughs> I think that's a very good story. Uh huh. Now tell me a little bit about now how the eight children in the family, how, how would a birthday have been celebrated? Did you have birthday parties? Or no, there was no birthday parties. If it was your birthday, your mum would bake a cake. You'd be lucky if there was a candle to be put on it. And it could be any shape or form of a candle. It could be one of the blessed candles out of the drawer of the granny had. It could be anything. Um, she, she would mark it. My mum would always make sure she had a card for whichever sibling's birthday it was. And she would have a cake. And there was no presents. There was, you know, if you got the cake, you were happy. So it was your. It was like a family. It was oh yes, it was just the house. family would be there and it'd sing to you and that would be it. Yeah. Yeah. It Did was you very... have lots of cousins? For, because you're from we had a lot, a lot of cousins, which we seen in the summertime. They would come on holiday to our house, which was a lot of fun for us because they came from England, a lot of them from Birmingham and London, and we had a next door neighbour at the time, an older lady who had a lot of grandchildren that visited her from Dublin and Cork City, so. They were who we grew up with in the summertime. That was our vacations. We didn't go anywhere. We stayed home for the summer. You didn't go to Mayo? Very seldom because we didn't have a car. Oh, I recall my parents going with my mom as we were getting older. I recall weddings and things, nieces and nephews, and my mom's getting married and they get invitations to weddings. They didn't make them all. But when they would decide they'd make a trip, they would either get a cousin to drive them up or borrow a car from a cousin and go up. But they might take one sibling, but they nearly always take one of the smaller ones oh, yeah. and leave the rest at home with Granny, yeah. you know, yeah. to take care of the chores that had to be done and whatever had to be done in the household. That had to be done practically, I suppose. Mm -hmm. yeah. I remember my first trip to Mayo, and I'll never forget, I was, I was actually a teenager. I was 13. What was it like? It, oh, it was like going to, you know, you thought you were so far away. You just couldn't, you thought it was the best day of your life to get up there. I travelled with an uncle, actually, my mum's brother that was home from England. And she decided to let me go with him because he was going to be returning within a week and taking her up to a wedding. Mm -hmm. So it was a week away from me and it was wonderful. And I had a time in my life he took me out with them at night and made me feel like the grown-up, of course. And they took me to all the um, festivals that were on locally and dances. And oh, my gosh. You can imagine a teenager. You feel like you're the bee's knees. You're out with the adults. Oh, wow. It was a lot of fun. And that's a long drive to get, to get up to Mayo. It would be... That was an all day trip. Oh, yeah. It was a day trip. It was a day up and a day down. Wow. Yeah. And, and that really lets you see the, the landscape of Ireland, too, because that changes a lot. In mm -hmm. that. I see a lot of changes in Ireland. And even when I going back now, I mean... Yeah, I bet. Oh, yeah. I mean, when I lived in Dublin, I travelled my holidays. A lot of them were spilt, spent a lot of time around Ireland hitchhiking. I hitchhiked. You wouldn't do it today, but I did a lot of camping and stuff like that. So I see a lot of changes. Oh, it's wonderful, like, to see it. But some of the some of the good things are what about the changes in Ireland now? The roads. Yeah. 
I'm sure you notice the potholes. <laughs> the roads are better. Transport is improved. You know, public transports. Um, the only thing is, there's too many people on the road. Not a speed. A lot of young people driving, which we didn't do when we were kids. But um, there's a lot of changes. They have really come on a long way. You know. A lot of, a lot of immigration too, wasn't there? A lot of immigrants in Ireland. Huh? It's like any country today. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of it. Yeah. And what, what are the downsides that you see about the changes? Um, drugs. Mm. A lot of drugs. Young people. And, I mean, it's always been there. They didn't get on top of it in time. That's my way of looking at it. I mean, there was drugs out there when I was a kid, but... You didn't dare, you know, you wouldn't be seen anyway. You weren't allowed out and that you weren't out socializing to be involved in it. But the sad thing today is it's in the schools, kids get it. Mm. It's like any country, you know, they just didn't get on top of it. Um, to me, it doesn't bother me about the immigrants in Ireland. A lot of people that have never left home, it bothers them a lot. I found that when I was at home last Christmas, 12 months, knowing what do you think when you went into your local town, what did you think of all the people around the place? And I'm like, I, I said, uh, nothing. I mean, it doesn't bother me. I'm used to that. Yeah. They don't change. People never leave home. They don't change. And they, they, they find it very hard to digest what's around them. Yeah. A lot of the older folks. Yeah, I would imagine. Oh, yeah. yeah. They yeah. find it very hard. And I have to look at it. I'm an immigrant. I came to another country. I said, you've got to take it and look at it from that perspective, you know, because this is where we ended up. Yeah. A lot of Irish did, too. A lot of oh, Irish yeah. immigrated out, too. Oh, yeah. The, and yeah. even up to 10 years ago. Yeah. I mean, I'm only 12 years gone out of my country. I mean, I immigrated 12 years ago. How has your chain, how has the town, your big town, your town that you would have gone to for your three miles away town, how has that changed? A lot of work in it. A lot of a lot of people that I went to school with have returned there and started businesses, and it's wonderful to see that. A lot of people have gone back, you know, returned home, started their own businesses, and it's not like when I was going out looking for a bit of work at home, and you were fit to be able to say, "Oh yes, I can go in and I can work in a hotel. I can do the bedrooms. I can do this. I can." Those jobs are not yours today. They're for the immigrants. Mm -hmm. They're the low salary jobs. This is who gets these jobs. You got to go out there educated today and be able to work. Yeah. So education is very important there today. How about the styles of homes? Oh please, <laughs> 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 they're like hotels. I do tell them they're not. They're mansions that they're building. My home that I lived in was my father's home place. When we lived in it with eight kids and my granny, there was 11 of us in that house. There was three bedrooms. There was no bathroom. There was no running water. I mean, it's today, it's a five-bedroom house with my mom living in it by herself <laughs> and three bathrooms. You know, this is what you're... And that's only a small home compared to what some people are living in. Now, yeah. does your mother still farm it? or is it No, no, no. She's, retired she's my, one of my brothers takes care of that. And he has a house nearby? He lives close by to her, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. And both my sisters have returned from London there. With their, both their husbands are from West Cork. They're local guys, and they've returned back home in the past four years. And do they also work that far? No, that they don't. Work? No, they're not farming. No. But they're nearby. They're nearby. That must be just... so nice for your mother. Oh, it is. It's wonderful oh, for her, you know. Fabulous for her. All right, tell me something <coughs> about uh, Christmas. How was Christmas celebrated when you were a kid? Um, there was a build-up to it. I mean... First of all, you had to be a carol singer in the church. You had to rehearse in school. That was exciting to think you were an important person. You were in the choir. And they did first mass on the Christmas morning would have been for the children to be in the choir, just children alone. And Christmas morning, getting up for Santa was a lot of excitement. But I was the older sibling, so... I used to be suspicious of Santa, so I was always looting the house to see where they were hidden. <laughs> and I often found them. <laughs> I remember what I recall one find the loot I had was in the washing machine, and there they were, all these toys sitting, and I was like, oh, I better not let on I've seen these or I'll get nothing, I thought. <laughs> but it was so easy to come buy stuff in our house. It was so small. Yeah. <laughs> but um, you just didn't make belief, and you 
went ahead with it and you had a lot of fun and you'd write to Santa and you were limited to what you would ask for, of course, one thing each. And you're lucky if you got what you were looking for, mm -hmm. you know. And then we shared a lot of our toys and, yeah. you know. How did you decorate the house up for the holidays? We would put up, a, we had a little tree, which was an artificial tree. I think my mum brought it from England when we were kids. Uh, we would put this up on a little windowsill in the house. And that had it was a small tree. We would put up paper decorations, which we would get and cut up into streamers. And you twisted them and hung them from the ceilings. You were lucky if you had balloons. Mm -hmm. You'd hang up actually your socks that you wore. Mm -hmm. You'd pin them with thumbtacks if you could in any piece of timber in the house. And believe me, there was nice things left in some of those socks for Christmas morning because my dad was a character. You could find anything from horse dung to coal oh, yeah. in your sock. <laughs> um, he'd do it to the older ones. Um, thought you got oranges and things like that. Oh, I never seen an orange in my sock. <laughs> you would get the little ones would get it, the younger ones. But as we grew older, that's the jokes and pranks he would pull on us, and you couldn't say anything. We, just, you know, you had to play with it. Yeah. But um, we'd have Christmas dinner. We would probably have our own turkey that we would have from the farm, and your own vegetables. We grew potatoes. We did all that kind of work. And you had plum pudding pie, and you'd have a Christmas cake, which was a wonderful thing to have to make. And you wouldn't just make one. You'd probably make, when you'd be doing a plum pudding for Christmas, you'd probably make three or four of them at the household. That was uh, There were so many of us. Yes, yes. And you could make probably two Christmas cakes. And did neighbours now come in? Did you exchange um, uh, yeah, between your neighbours? You and did, and if there was any cousins. Oh, I always recall my mum and dad would go to midnight mass. But that's what they told us. They used to go to the pub, I think, as well. <laughs> and the Honda 50. But they always went by my dad's uncle's house on Christmas Eve. And I recall I used to sit up with Granny till they come home. And it used to be quite late sometimes to us, you know. We, we'd just wait up to see what was the news and, you know, they'd bring in the local gossip to you. But um, they did that right up. To my father died. That was a custom they had between them. They would go to the Uncle Dan's house. Yeah. Even when he had passed away, they would still visit that house. They'd still go to that yeah. house. They yeah. still visit that house to the son that was there. Yeah. Um, Christmas morning, of course, we were up probably at the crack of dawn, like any other house. And we all had to go. I know that 10 o'clock mass was our mass Sunday morning. We had to be out that door and up the road walking for mass. We had to walk. And how far? That was, the church was three miles from us. We'd cross the fields and you'd be warned, when I find you up at the church, don't have muck on your socks uh -huh. where you cross the fields and yeah. hold each other's hands, be careful, you got warnings leaving the house, be there, don't be doodling on the road. Time meant nothing to us as kids. Uh -huh. An hour to go up three miles, I mean, we could probably just make mass, you know, we just walk in and be started. Yeah. Your parents would be there in front of you, where were you, where were you, you knew by the looks. We would walk and we were coming to Mass. <laughs> Probably eating the blackbird and blackberries going along the road. Right. <laughs> Taking the path. Yeah. Uh, did, at Christmas time, did they have like Ren Boys or? We did the Ren. Okay. You did the oh, we loved the Ren Boys. We did that. There was a, it still it still goes, it's traditional. Since Stevens's day, we would all get a Ren Bush, a Holly Bush. We'd decorate it. Now, you wouldn't get the Ren Bird, but that custom would have been years ago, the wood. Mm -hmm. So we used to, I remember we used to have a decoration of a little robin and we used to tie him on our bush and we used to say that was our bird. And we would do the local neighbours when we were little, you know, and we wouldn't all go out together because you'd make more money by going out separately. Oh. So there was eight of us. <laughs> so you'd go on twos. But it'd be like a little one and an older one. We had to, we had to be mixed up. But the little ones, if they were very young, they didn't go out. And... My older brothers, they had bicycles as they got older and they used to be, as we used to think, it was so horrible to think they would have done the whole round before we get there. And, oh, you were here already, you know, you were passed off. As your family was here already, so they wouldn't get us, we wouldn't get, you'd be lucky if you got sweets or, but we would be looking for the pennies, the money. But a lot of fun then when we come home and 
the evening time and they'd be the last home also, the older ones. And my dad used to sit at the table, county it out with them, you know, and he'd be pocketing some of it, joking with us, <laughs> yeah. teasing. But it was a lot of fun mm. to have your own money. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, was that, um, I, 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 as you're talking, I'm thinking of Halloween. Was Halloween anything? Did we didn't, the way we celebrated Halloween was in our home. Um, just your family, same as Christmas. You would do hang an apple from a ceiling, hands behind your back, and you would have to catch it with your mouth and shoulder. And if you pull the apple down, you you know, if it's up to your parents. If they had pennies, they would pri give you a prize. And then the other one was a dish of water on the floor and ducking your head in to get the penny out of the bowl. To get a penny out? Oh, yes. Oh, my gosh, that must have been a miracle. Or an apple. Oh, well, you'd do it if you wanted that penny. You'd do it. <laughs> um, then we used to have the barn brack. Tell me about that. And they'd have, oh, we used to get so excited. The man that used to come with the horse and the cart, he used to bring the bracks. And they were big round bracks. They were really big ones. And it's a kind of bread. Oh, yes, yeah. it is. Yeah. Raisins in it and fruit. And there would be different items put through it when they baked it. Like a ring. There would be a pea, a rag, and a stick. And they were like what you would, that normally people would slice it. But my mum used to just break it up. So you, because it was sliced, we'd see what was in it. So to cover it up, she would just take lumps off it and give us all. And you were there, you were just, if you got one of those, you were so lucky to get them. And of course, there was different meanings to it. Um, the rag was for being poor and a stick was, to, I don't know, you walk with a stick. There was different sayings than the ring to be married and the pee, I don't know, I can't even remember that one. Yeah. But there was a lot of that custom and it was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, a lot of fun. So there would only be four things you could get, and if there were 10 of you or 11 of you... She might have two bracks. You'd be lucky. Yeah. And it was a lot of fun, and it was exciting. You'd go to school the next day. If you had got one of those, you'd be telling your friend in school, I got this, I got that. You were so entertained with that. Yeah. 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 So there was no dressing up in costumes oh, no. or anything like that? No, we Did never heard of it. dress up? You... When we were little kids, we didn't disguise ourselves. But as we got older, we would disguise ourselves when we became adults. I mean, if I was at home for Christmas today, I would still go out and you disguise. Would. Oh, yes. Yeah. And my mom, every one of us. Now we would play more musical instruments and sing or dance. But we would go out to the pubs. The pubs are closed in Ireland Christmas Day, but they're open Stevens Day uh -huh. on Boxing Day. Yeah. So they're packed. Every pub in Ireland is packed since Stevens' day, so the pubs were a big hit for us. As we got older, we would do the pubs because you'd get more money, but you'd always have to have somebody stand and watch. You wouldn't disguise. In other words, you'd carry a lump of a stick with you or a shillelagh or whatever because you could be attacked. The people would have drink and then they'd start pulling your disguise off. Oh, oh, oh. I could get, you know, some of the bad, but we had a lot of fun. But as we got older and we did a lot of that, we fundraised the money. That's what we would do today. We would put it towards something. Always donate money to something, some fund. One of the charities that yes, there's yeah. a lot of charities. Yeah. So we would donate. So you had a party piece then, obviously. You had some sort of party piece. Well, you pretend you had anyway. You'd have to go. You couldn't miss the fun of going out of disguise. But um, you had a bow on. You could have a tambourine with you, even if you didn't play. You could bang it. You could pretend, yeah. or a mouth organ or a tin whistle. But more often than not, I was the one with the tambourine or the bow on with me not that I could play it professionally but just to make just some noise yeah, yeah but my mom and I have two family members that play accordion and that and you would sing and is it a musical family primarily is everybody in your family a little bit musical There's, everybody's into music somewhere but I wouldn't say you know you know put the whole lot together you could hear a lot of noise and you sing <laughs> not really no no, my mom, mom, yes, she would sing, and she'd have a lot of old songs. I'd sing along with people, but I wouldn't sing as in person yeah. myself, no. What's your favorite song, if you think back? Um, well, I was into a lot of Irish country music when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. I'd done a lot of that. I went to a lot of dances. Mm -hmm. And I remember going to the local hall to my first dance, and it was waltzing, and, you know... They didn't do any jiving down where I come from. It was quick steps. Yeah. But um, when I traveled, I learned how to do the rest of it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was all waltzes and jives and things like that. And it was all Irish country music, I would call it. Yeah. And what, was, what, what song, when you think about your mother singing a song, what, 
What do you love to hear her sing? She used to sing Spencer Hill. And she had a lot of songs. She used to sing a lot of them from up around the west of Ireland. Take Me Home to Mayo. Um, she they sang a lot, down where I come from, a lot of rebel songs, ballads mm -hmm. in the pub scene. And when we were children, as we got older, like to my teens, my parents might go out on a Sunday evening. And they would always say, OK, it's your turn. I'll take you tonight for the sing song in the pub. Yeah. But as I say, I was shy and I wouldn't sing in public. I was, oh, no, I couldn't. But my younger sister, Helen, I recall her going to the pub and she would sing, sing, sing for them. So they took her with her most of the time. And a lot of tourist people came around where we lived and they were totally entertained with this child singing, I guess. Mm -hmm. Is she still singing today? She still oh, she plays. Singing. She would sing. She plays instruments and she has her own kids in it as well, you know. But she wouldn't, she wouldn't have the same courage she had when she was that age. <laughs> <laughs> She'd sing, you know, she had to sing, but not put herself up in the front line to do it. Yeah. Uh, but there was uh, a lot of that went on. Yeah. Um, and um, my head's gone right out of me. Um, in the, in the, uh, how about drama? Was there any drama? Did you get involved in drama? No, we didn't because like that we didn't have the transport. In school, as I say, I left at the age of you know, I was out of school at the age of 14 and a half, 15. Um, if I continued on in school, I would have been more involved in that. As you got up in years in school, you would. There'd be plays and stuff, but no, I didn't get into the drama. How about sports? I was not when I was growing up at home as a kid, but as I went on and when I ended back in Dublin, I became a big marathon runner. I was really? in. I'd done triathlons, cross countries. I was a runner. I was into all that athletical stuff. Wow. Yeah, I'd done probably 10 to 12 mini marathons in Dublin, the women's mini marathons. And how did you do? Oh, I mean, you're up against thousands. My first was my best, of course. You know, your first is always... It wouldn't be like who would... There was top athletes in there to win, but we just did out and you did your thing and you sponsored something. You always fundraised for something. Yes. And you did your thing and you had to enjoy it to do it. I enjoyed road running. I mean, I don't do it today because I've ended up my knees, like a lot of runners. Um, enjoyed doing it. I cycled. I always, when I lived in Dublin, my transport was a rally racing bike, 15 gears, and that was it. No, no cars. Did you live in downtown Dublin? I lived in the city. In the city. I lived in, I worked on the south side of the city and I lived on the north side of and Dublin. What, what did you do? What was I you was doing? a beautician. Oh, okay. So yeah. you really did go. You, yeah. you really did use the. the oh, I did. You did. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. I worked there. Yeah. Um, the the church, when you were growing up, real important in your in your. Very, life? very important in our house. I recall, you would say the rosary every night in our house. Um, it wasn't a lot of skitting and laughing done, of course. <laughs> <laughs> no, you it could be neighbors in. Could be some of my older siblings have friends in, and you take one peek, you'd be lying in, in your knees on the floor, your elbows up on the chair, and looking through the rungs of the chair in order to take for someone to make a face in the middle of it just to get you skitting. Yeah. And dare you do that in our house, or you were sent to another room. Um, that was every evening, and more often than that, when everybody got home, so there was no set time, and it had to be every evening in so the house before you went to bed. To the house. Yeah, and more often than that, my dad was the last in. And he was very, and my granny, and of course, the rosary had to be said. And the Angelus at six o'clock, yeah. if you were at home. The Angelus bell, my granny would turn on the radio and the bell is ringing and everyone would stand up and do the Angelus mm. at six o'clock. And if you were there at 12 o'clock, she would do it too. And what was what was the Angelus? Was, there, was it a prayer that was said? Uh, the Angelus bell, yeah. It would ring at 12, you'd say an Angelus prayer. And again, at six o'clock, you'd do the same thing. And what was the prayer? I don't recall. Okay. <laughs> I just, you know, I can remember the angels being said, and yeah. it was a short prayer. I know that still, when I've been in Ireland, you still hear that at noon. Yes, they do. In the towns, the bell would ring. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember when you actually physically heard the bells ringing in the town, too. Oh, yeah. I think a lot of them still do it. Yeah. I think it's a beautiful, beautiful mm -hmm. custom. Yeah. And in the, out where we lived in the country, too, I mean, the church was like three miles away. You would hear that in the nice, mild evening. You would hear the bell ringing at the church. There would be a bell ringer 
person would be asked to do it every month. And it would be like doing the collection at Mass on a Sunday. There would be someone's name called out for cleaning the church for the collections and the bell ringing yeah. in our yeah. church at home. Yeah. So um, that was a lot. So a church, Mass was just absolutely a regular thing that happened every Sunday? Every Sunday, Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. Yeah. And we also had to go to confessions every Saturday morning if you were old enough. Every Saturday morning, like, I don't know what we were up there doing, but <laughs> <laughs> we went and we used to, it was, you're getting away from the house. You went all the way up. You'd meet your friends from school in the church. There was yeah. a whole clutter of kids in the church on a Saturday morning. The priest was kept busy. Yeah. And you'd line up and go to the confessional and then take off home. It probably took us an hour to get there, an hour to get home. I don't know. <laughs> but you went every Saturday morning. How was your first communion? What was your first communion like? Um... It was fun. I was in class with another brother. I was kept back. Well, what happened when we came from England, I, I started behind. Like You went to school when you were four. Mm. So when I got home, I was gone four, so I didn't start school until I was five. And when I started, I was in with another brother in the same class right through school. So both of us made our communion and confirmation together. And believe you me, it wasn't about money and what you got. <laughs> <laughs> I recall the dress I had. My mom took me into the local town for my dress, my communion dress, and that was a day out. I, I can really remember that clearly today, and I can still see the dress, and I thought, sure, I thought it was the bee's knees with this dress, and, oh God, and the bobby socks to the knees and the white shoes. And she had an outfit for my brother because she had two other boys and had made communion. So she kept the one outfit and the same thing. My dress was passed down passed as well. Passed down, yes, yeah. yeah. Is it still in the family? Do you know? It's still it's in the house. It is. It's still in the house. And our, and the christening gown she had, well, not the whole eight of us were christened. The christening gown in our house was over 100 and something years old. It was from my mother's side of the family. Yeah, yeah and I, I christened both my boys in it. Yeah. I was going to ask you, did you yeah. make it yourself? Yeah. I did, yeah. Oh, but, um, yeah, I... That, that dress is still in the house. The christening gown is still in the house. I can recall that. And we used to have the station in the house. Well, tell me about that, the station. We yeah. loved to have the station. It was like every four years when we were kids growing up in the parish, you would have a mass in the house. The preparation would be everybody in the house. If you were fit to do a hold a paintbrush or a brush outside, you whitewash the walls mm-hmm. with lime and buckets. And it was great preparations. The yard would be all cleaned up. All then you have stuff hanging around from the lads working or bicycles, everything had to be cleaned up. And you probably just took it around the back and dumped it somewhere else out of sight. Um, the house would be cleaned on the lower level, I'm going to say, because whatever junk had to be taken out was put upstairs <laughs> out of sight as well. And um, the main thing was the priest came in the morning and he did mass, and you had to have breakfast for him in the house. And the neighbours all came in for the mass. But they had an altar. They would set up a table in the little altar. And my grandmother had all the stuff, the linen. They had special linens for it from years ago. And she still had it. And she would pin to the ceiling this little corner, four corner, it was um, done in um, linens. And she would do all this up and across. She had her special, the crucifix, the candles. She set the whole thing out. The priest came, you did mass, you did breakfast. And as soon as the priest left, the holy started, of course. Yeah. Whatever time he set off about his business, then all the neighbours would come in and it was, a, it was a session. Sing song and beer and dancing. And it could go on till all hours of the night. Yeah. But when we were children growing up, coming from, if you had your station, you didn't go to school, your parents would let you stay at home that day. But if it was in a neighbour's house in the parish, you would run from school to make sure you got home and cleaned up whatever you had to clean up and get your chores done and you were allowed to go to the neighbour's house to the station and of course all we could think of was food <laughs> what we were going to get Treats. oh yeah you knew you were going to get some